This is a review of the last questions of the CAT 3 review worksheet. Essentially, we're going to review all the types of mathematical jewel questions you have to know for eventually your second dog, your second test. So let's get started with this. Take it out if you haven't, pause me, but take out 27 to, uh, through, I believe, the last couple of questions to 32. So we're going to walk yourself through all these, and these are all the types of questions you have to be able to answer. Okay, so number one, number 27, which is the first one of these mathematical questions, um, we have to be able to identify first what type of question we have. So number 27, a 7 gram sample of water is heated and its temperature rises from 10 degrees to 15 degrees um, Celsius. What is the total amount of energy absorbed by the water? Okay, well in this case, we're going to understand that we need, to need, we need the uh, a Joule equation okay the heat equation that we use in this course and if you forget you should know that in your reference table we have one so let's go there so if we go to a reference table table T which is our last reference table and we scroll down we will see that we have our heat equations right here and if we zoom in a little bit maybe we will see that our formula is Q equals MC change in T and they tell you the M is the mass of that same substance, C is the specific heat of that same substance, and change in temperature. The specific heat, which is the ability for the substance to change its temperature, it's how well it conducts energy, is located in table B. So if we go up to table B in our reference table, all right, we can see that our constants for water and that's important you understand that this is only for water because as we saw we can use different specific heats but the specific heat for water is 4.18 joules per gram now we use per degree Celsius but a Kelvin is equal to a degree Celsius they're the same size okay so it's a change so let's go back to our um, problem okay I'm gonna make some room we're gonna do all these problems so no no craziness if you want to take out a piece of paper and just write this problem out, if you don't have the room, okay, do so. All right, so I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to start with my energy equation. Q equals mc change of T. Okay, let's see what they gave me. It's important. I have a 7 gram water sample. That, my friends, is the mass. So I have 7 grams, 7.00 grams. Okay, specific heat we know from our reference table for water, 4.18 joules over gram per degree Celsius. I put the units in, don't get scared by that, so I can remember what units I need to make this all work. And then if you notice, they give me what? Two temperatures. It rises, right? So maybe it's important to, for you to draw yourself an equation here. Got a sample of water. Here it is, H2O. Temperature is rising, so therefore the heat is going into that system or that amount of water. So the temperature rises. They want to know how much heat is going in if I start at 10 degrees Celsius and now I'm at 15. So my temperature change is going to be 15.0 minus 10.0. Of course, that's going to be 5.0. So I put that in. So this is a bit, pretty much a straight plug-in. And now what I do here, and hopefully it doesn't confuse you, I'm going to cancel out the units so I know that I set this up right. Grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels, and I'm left with J for joules. And I take my calculator out, and all I want to do here is multiply across. 7.00 times 4.18 times 5 and that gives me 146.3 so 146.3 and my unit left standing my friends in chemistry is the joule okay so I put the joule there all right and if you notice the closest answer is choice D so D is my answer and Mm, shouldn't have not been too much of a problem there. It's pretty much straightforward, not much of conversions. Uh, you notice they rounded to three sig figs because this number has three sig figs and this number, of course, has two. 
So in truth, we should have rounded to one, two sig figs, but uh, I guess what they're saying is that these numbers have three sig figs. So it, it, it doesn't matter because it's multiple choice. I can understand if you put two, but honestly, when you start the equation, you got three here. And you, these numbers have three, and these numbers have three. No matter, that's really the particulars. But D is, should have been no problem getting that closest answer. Okay, moving to 28. Reading number 28, seeing what kind of information they give you. What's the total number of joules of heat absorbed when it when the temperature of 200 grams of water is raised from 10 degrees to 40? So, same kind of issue here. We have some water in some kind of container, and it initially is at 10 degrees. Heat must be flowing into the system because we know the temperature now becomes 40. So our temperature change is going to be 40 degrees zero minus 10. I'm always subtracting the two temperatures because I want something called the change in temperature. So 40 minus 10 gives me 30.0 degrees Celsius. Now I wrote change of H, which we've been learning last week, and um, that gets kind of confusing because, well, the change of H is something that we had a change in the heat. Energy started in a fish, so I, I was thinking change of temperature, yet I wrote change of H. So, uh, sorry about that, so that's change in temperature. Now the change of H, um, honestly, is a difference of energy too. It's a subtraction of energy from where you start to where you finish. I'm sorry, that's change in temperature, sorry. Okay, so back to our thermal equation. Q is equal to MC change in T. It's always of the same substance. In this case, it's water. Let's plug in what they gave me. 200 grams of water. No sweat. Uh, specific heat, because it's water, is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Change in temperature. Well, we have that. right? It's 30.0 degrees Celsius. And now... I just like to cancel my units, grams over grams cancel, Celsius over Celsius, just to remind myself that I have the right units. And now I'm just going to plug these values in like we did for the first question. 200 times 4.18 times 30.0 gives me a raw number, an unrounded number of 250. Eight zero, and of course that's joules. Okay, and you can see that that number is posted here. You notice they in this choice, and these are regions questions. They didn't care for any significant figures whatsoever. This, of course, has four. These numbers have three. So I would suspect our answer should have been rounded if this was a question that was done uh, for me or someone outside of, I guess, this regions question. You really should get two five one. Zero, zero joules. That's how it should be rounded. Okay, but in this question, they didn't round. They just put the, the number that was the closest. So that was choice. Um, choice C was the answer. Okay, let's go on to number 29. In number 29, how many kilojoules of heat are needed to raise a temperature of 5 grams of water from 10 degrees to 30 degrees? Okay, well, they're asking for kilojoules of heat. And again, we still have water. And it's still going up in temperature. It's starting at 10 and it's going to 30. So obviously heat is still going into my water. So therefore that's why the temperature goes up. And we have the final temperature to be 30.0 degrees Celsius and the initial temperature to be 10. Clearly energy is going into the water because the temperature is going up. Subtract these two values and you get 20.0 degrees Celsius. That's equal to my change in temperature. Of course they're asking for heat. They're asking for kilojoules, but it's still joules, so Q is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water, change in temperature of the water. It's always the same uh, su substance for the same Q. All right, let's plug in. We have 500 grams of water. Okay, specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram 
per degree Celsius. Change in temperature is, of course, we just got that as 20.0 degrees Celsius. And, of course, as you've been seeing me do, I'm going to cancel my units. And this is important. Even this equation here, you see, notice something. I'm going to solve for joules. Why? Because guess what? All my units cancel out the joules. This should tell you that we're not going to get kilojoules directly out of this equation. We're going to have to cancel, I'm sorry, we're going to have to convert after. So that's why the joules are very helpful. They tell me what I'm actually solving for, and then it reminds me of what I have to do on top of it. So in this case, let's solve for the joules first. 500 times 4.18 times 20, and that gives me 41,800 joules. So 41,800 joules. That's not kilojoules. Okay, if they were nasty, they'd have a choice exactly like this. All right, so we're going to convert this, and we've been converting since the first week in school, so let's just set up our conversion. We're going to get rid of joules, so joules goes on the bottom, and we want kilojoules. And as we've learned, the bigger unit, kilo is a thousand joules, right? So the bigger unit gets a smaller number, so every one of these is a thousand joules. Joules cancel, I'm always using my units. And then, of course, I'm times in one dividing by a thousand. And what I get is I get 41.8 okay, kilojoules. Notice I start with three sig figs, I end with three sig figs. Okay. And that's why B is your answer. Choice B. All right, number 30. Okay, in this question, a lot of people have asked me about this particular question. This question is asking for how many grams of water, okay? And it's very, very similar to the change in temperature questions, but let's go ahead and do this. How do I know it's a Q formula? How do I know it's an energy formula? Well, how many grams of water will absorb, listen to the question, the total amount of energy when the temperature of the water changes from 10 to 30? Well, I have water. Draw yourself a diagram. Draw, draw, draw. Have some water. It's going from 10 to 30. The temperature is going up. So that means that heat is flowing into the system. We've, dr we've drawn this before. So energy is going up. They're actually telling me how much energy is going in. Unlike the other three questions, they're telling me 20... 2,510 joules of energy are going into the water. We know the temperature change. We should be able to solve for what's missing in the formula. So I know it's Q equals MC change in T because it's the same picture. Energy is going in, energy is going out. It's about joules. So I write down my formula. It's always of the same substance, in this case water. Now, unlike the other questions where we're solving for Q, they gave me Q. They gave me the energy to be 2,510 joules already. Okay? And the mass is something they did not give me. So that's an unknown. Now, if you're comfortable writing X, write it as X, as your unknown in your algebraic equation. I like to write it as M so I know what I'm solving for. But you, know, you be... What, you do whatever makes you comfortable. Specific heat, well, it's still water. Its ability to conduct heat is still the same. 1.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And, of course, the change in temperature, 30 minus 10. I don't think I have to subtract to do that for you. That's going to be 20 degrees, or 20.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've set everything up. If you notice in our last... Uh, problems, we've had one missing unknown, which was joules. Here it's mass. So we're going to have to do some algebra. Now, let's go through it very simply. If I wanted to solve for this x, I want to get m or this x, let's call it just m for this case, by itself. So what I do, because it's an equation, we're going to multiply both sides by the same okay, value. So to get rid of this, okay, because really this is what? Over 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is multiply this side by 4.18. I'm just going to leave the units out for now. 
times 20. Oops, bad Grodsky. Uh, we want to cancel it out, don't we? So algebra means I'm going to multiply this side by 1 over 4.18, right, and 20. Now, and what you do to one side of an equation, you do to another. So I multiplied because they're what? They're equal. So I have to do equal things to them. So in algebra, you learn to get rid of these numbers. I basically am going to uh, multiply them by the inverse, right? One over that. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm multiplying both sides by 1 over 4.18. So it doesn't change anything. Now watch what happens. Okay? This number is 4.8 times 20 over 4.8 times 20 will cancel. And this will give me this number over that. So when you rewrite, you get 2510 joules over 4.18, and I'll put the units in joules per gram per degree Celsius, times 20.0 degrees Celsius. And that equals what's left standing is m. So all I did was algebra. Now what I've been doing in class is a little bit of a shortcut, is I know that these numbers on top and one side algebraically would go where? Would go to the bottom of the other side. So I've been doing that. I've been just taking this group of numbers, and I've been moving them to the denominator of the other side. That's just a little bit of an algebraic shortcut. But what I'm really doing is multiplying both sides by one over those numbers so they cancel and what I do to one side I do to the other. Now the question is how do I solve for this? Well now I use my calculator. Okay. And what I'm going to do my calculator I'm going to take 2510 joules and I'm going to divide by parentheses and this this number here. So if you don't know how to do this, hold on a second, I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm going to take 2510, right? This number here, 2510 divide by, so we're going to put this in a calculator this way, so 2510, so we take uh, 2510, we're going to hit divide by, okay, we're going to divide by 4.18. Now before we put 4.1 in here, we put parentheses. 4.18, and the reason we use parentheses is because we know that we're, it's not by 4.18, it's 4.8 times something else. It's important you put them in parentheses. Times 20 and close the parentheses. So times 20, and you close the parentheses. Okay? So that's really important because if you did 2510 divided by 4.18 and then times by 20, that'd be like having 20 in the numerator. You have to do that because it's the product of those two numbers. Hit equal. Okay? And that's our number, 30.02. So we get 30.02. Two, and let's look carefully at our units. Grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels, and believe it or not, one over one over grams actually equals grams. You don't have to know that for this course, but mathematically that's what it means. Now, of course, we have too many sig figs. Um, this has three sig figs. These numbers have three, so we should pick, this should become 30.0 grams, and that, of course, is choice B. Now don't fall in love with the fact is picking the closest number because some of these questions that you have uh, that I'll have on my tests or dog or cat or any other kind of assessment or even the regents could be a question where they don't have multiple choices. You have to be able to solve it without having, this, having seen what numbers are close to for a multiple choice answer. Okay so that's how you do that. Let's go on to number 31. Okay, in 31, 4 grams of water at 1 degree Celsius absorbs energy. What will be the change in temperature? So it's the same picture. We have some water. Okay, it's at 1 degree Celsius. And again, 
It absorbs energy or heat. All these questions tend to be taking energy in from the surroundings, and it's telling you that it absorbs 33 joules of heat. So what will be the change? They're not asking for the final temperature, they're asking for the change, and that symbol triangle means change. So this is a thermal equation, so we go Q equals MC change of T. Let's plug in. It's a really good um, strategy to write down your equation like I'm doing and then see what they're giving you and plug them in if you're having problems seeing how to solve for this. So I write down my thermal equation because I see energies going in. I hear joules. I hear change in temperature. So let's see what they give me. They give me four grams of water. That's my mass. So I put that in. I know my specific heat. That's not going to be given. That's going to be given your reference table as we've talked about it. And they're asking for the change. This gets confusing. This is not a change of temperature. It's a what? It's an initial temperature. So it's, it's not the change. You need what? Two temperatures to get a change, right? You have your temperature final minus your temperature initial to give your change in temperature. So they're only giving me my temperature initial. So I don't have the change. That's important because some people would tend to put that in right here and get themselves confused because notice something. They gave us 33 joules of heat. And then if you put the one degree zero here, you have nothing to solve for. All right, so it's important you recognize they're asking for the change. They're only giving you an initial temperature, and that can get confusing. Okay, so solve for the change. And if you notice something, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the mass. We're going to have to solve for it algebraically. So what I do here is, well, this is really over 1, isn't it? So what I do to one side, I do to another. So I'm going to times this by 4.0 times 4.18. And the reason why I'm doing on the bottom is I want to cancel these numbers, right? Because I want the change in temperature to be by itself. And what I do to one side of an equation, I do exactly to the other side because they're equal. So this is over 4.0, and this is 4.18. And then we clean this up, these cancels, and what you have is change in temperature. I'll put another equal signs here is equal to 33 joules over 4.0 grams over 4.18 joules. Okay. And now you notice something. Joules cancel. And by the way, I didn't write that in full. 4.0 joules per gram per degree Celsius. I'm kind of cancel units I didn't write. It's bad, Grotsky. Grams cancel. And what I get is 1 over 1 over degree Celsius. By the way, that actually equals a degree Celsius. Again, not part of the course, but interesting math facts. In any case, temperature change. Let's go find that number. Now, how do I do this again? 33. 30. 33. Divide by... Divide by 40, which is multiplied by 44.18, so we're going to have to use our parentheses. So parentheses for oh, times for, oops, got to do that again, I guess. So 33, well, I guess I'll do that, 4 times 4.18 close my parentheses. Very important to use the parentheses here as we talked about previously because we're going to have to make sure that's the product of these numbers you're dividing by. And I get 1.97. So 1.97 degrees Celsius which is my change in temperature. Okay, that's what I'm about. Of course, I have two significant figures, two significant figures, so my answer is going to round to 2.0 degrees Celsius, which, in fact, is choice A. All right, so this question was very much like the last one for mass, except we were solving for change in temperature. 
and we had to get rid of all this stuff. Again, if you want to use a shortcut, all of this stuff will go on the bottom of the other side if you don't want to use this cumbersome algebraic formulas. And that's, it's not cheating. That's what's going to happen when you multiply 1 over this for it to cancel out. Hopefully that helped and the algebra is not getting in the way. 32. Okay, 32. I have 84 joules of heat being added to 2 grams of water at a certain temperature. They want the what? They want the final temperature. This is the hardest of all of these questions. So let's see here. What do I have? I have a container of water. Okay, it's initially at 15 degrees Celsius. Draw yourself a diagram. But what it says, heat is being added. So draw arrows going in. The heat is going into the water. So I know the water is going to get warmer. Okay, now it's about energy. I see joules, I see grams. Therefore, I know I'm using my thermal equation. Q equals M. C, change of T. Let's plug in. It's a good habit to write the formula out first and see what you have to plug in. Well, I have 84 joules. I know the mass is 2.0 grams. I know the specific heat because it's water. If it wasn't water, you'd have to give it to you. 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Do not put the 15 in here. Just like number 31, 15 is not a change. It's initial temperature, right? To get the change in temperature, you would have to take the temperature final minus the temperature initial. We only have the initial temperature. So we're going to solve for the change in temperature first. And there we go with an unknown. What do we do with this, right? If you've been watching number 30 and 31, I multiplied both sides by 1 over to cancel this out. But now since we've done it a couple times, I know my change in temperature is going to be equal to 84 joules over 2.0 grams times 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. If you don't know how I made that leap, Okay, look at number 30 and 31. All I did was multiply this side by 1 over 2.0 times 4.18. And I did the same thing over here. This canceled, and it left me with 84 over that. Hopefully you can see that. All right, and again, if you want to watch me do that step by step, 30 and 31, I do that. Okay, so let's get our number here. Okay, 84 divided by 2. So let's clear this. 84 divided by 2 or parentheses. Yes, you need the parentheses. 2, okay, times 4.18, close the parentheses. Got to close them. Equals 10.0, around to 5 if you want, 10.0, 10 10.0. 10 5, and what do we have? Joules cancels, grams cancels, left standing is degrees Celsius. Now, what did you solve for? You solve for the change. That's why having an X here is not a good idea. We just solve for the change in temperature, which is not what they asked for. They asked for the final temperature. My friends in chemistry, think with me. If heat was added to the water, and in fact, 84 joules was added, the temperature change is 10.5. Okay, well, if we start at 15 and the temperature changes 10, what are we going to do here? Well, in this case, we're going to add. Why in this case? Because heat was what? Heat was added. Heat was added. We started at 15. The change, which means change means it's either going to go up 10 degrees or down 10. That's the change. We started at 15. Well, because heat is added, it's going to go up, okay, 10, right? We start at 15. It's going up 10 or down 10. By heat being added, it's going to go up 10. So I add 10. 
and what I get is 25 degrees Celsius and that's why choice A is the answer. This is the hardest question because you have to first recognize you're solving for the change and then you have to do something after. Realizing energy is going into the water, you add that to your initial. But if this said released, okay, if this said released, if the arrows are going out, you'd recognize that you're losing 10 and you'd subtract. So be very careful. You have to read the question. That's why chemistry is challenging. It's just not problems. You have to get into the problem, understand the uh, concept, and, and draw, draw, and draw these energy flow diagrams. Okay, hope that helps. So 32 was A.